Let's take an in-depth look at Preferences in Transmit, the most powerful file transfer app for your Mac. To open Preferences, head up to the menu bar and choose Transmit Preferences. Here we are. Transmit's Preferences are grouped into eight handy tabs. Let's start with General and work our way down to Advanced. Up first is Default FTP Client. This dropdown tells your computer which application to use when opening FTP connections. For example, when you click on a link like FTP colon slash slash username at ftp.example.com. Should you change this from Finder, which is the default, to Transmit? We think so, but it's completely up to you. Tell Transmit which servers to open by default. This first dropdown corresponds to Transmit's left pane, and by default is set to show your computer's home folder. You can change it to one of your remote servers if you'd like. The second dropdown corresponds to Transmit's right pane, and by default is set to None, which will show you the Quick Connect and Servers view. You can change this to a second instance of your local server, or choose your favorite remote server. And if you set up either pane to use one or more of your saved servers, check this box labeled Connect to Server on Startup to automatically open a connection to the server when Transmit launches. Here, you can choose whether you want tabs in Transmit to show the server name or the name of your current folder. Menlo is a classic monospace typeface, but you can choose to use a different one when editing files directly in Transmit. There's a short video about editing files in Transmit, if you want to know more. Check this checkbox if you use Transmit Disk and want to access it from the menu bar. Note that Transmit Disk is currently only supported in the direct download version of Transmit, available at panic.com transmit. You can help us improve Transmit by checking this box. This will send us crash reports and statistics. We care about your privacy. You can read a clear, simple explanation of what information is sent and why at panic.com slash privacy. If you purchase Transmit from the Mac App Store, you'll be able to set your update settings over there. If you purchase Transmit from Panic's website, here are your options for checking for and installing updates to Transmit. You can automatically download and install any available updates. Choose to just receive a notification dialog when an update is available, or never check for updates. Not recommended. That's it for our general settings. Let's take a look at the Sync tab. Panic Sync is a free, secure, purpose-built way to sync your server's keys and passwords. Get an overview of how it works in our video about Panic Sync. Here, you can sign in to Panic Sync or create your free account. If you also use Coda, you can share servers, passwords, and private keys across applications and on different devices. Nice! Let's move on to the Files tab. If you want to play it safe with file deletion, check this box. Transmit will ask before sending local items to the trash or deleting remote items forever. Here's where you can change what happens when you double-click a file. Choose from nothing, that's kind of boring though, right? Transfer, edit in Transmit's editor, or edit an external editor. Whatever you choose, you can also use command plus down arrow to do it. Unless you chose nothing, then nothing will happen. Transmit can associate external applications with different file types. Editors you define here appear in the contextual menu when control clicking on a file and will be used when the double click action is set to edit an external editor. To add a file type, click the plus button, enter its extension, and choose which application you'd like to use. You also have the option to use this application for all files, regardless of type. If you need to remove a custom editor extension pair, select it and click the minus button. You can also edit these by clicking the edit button. Let's move on to the transfers tab. This area is all about resolving file conflicts. By default, Transmit will just ask you what you want to do when transferring an item to a location where an item with the same name already exists. But you can tell Transmit what to do ahead of time with different instructions for downloading and uploading files and folders. It's nice to have options. Let's go over them. Overwrite will delete the existing file and write the pending file into its place. Resume is intended for use after an interrupted connection. Transmit will continue uploading the pending file starting at the end of the existing file. Note that not all servers support resuming transfers, though. Keep Both will keep the existing file as it is and append the new file name with a number. Skip will just skip the conflicted transfer, keeping your original file in its place and moving on to the next item in the queue. And folders get one more option, Merge. 
Transmit will compare the contents of the source and destination folders, overwrite any existing files at the destination as needed, transfer new items, and just leave files that exist in the destination folder, but not the source folder, alone. So be aware that merging a folder is not the same as overwriting it. Merge is the less destructive option. If you have a relatively fast connection, you should probably leave these bandwidth checkboxes alone. But if you need to, you can limit Transmit's total upload and download bandwidth. Change how many files can be transferred simultaneously, too. And if you're looking for a way to limit the number of simultaneous connections to your server, I'll go over that when we get to the Advanced tab. Check this box to use Passive Mode by default for FTP transfers. But note that each of your saved servers has a setting for this that will override this global setting. Check this box if you'd like Transmit to play an alert sound when transfer is complete. You can choose which sound right here. And you can check this box if you'd like to automatically open files after they finish downloading. Choose whether items in the Transfer Activity view disappear after they finish successfully or persist until you remove them manually. This list shows the file extensions of items that will be transferred using FTP's ASCII mode. ASCII mode transfers files as readable text. For example, a text document or HTML file. If an extension is not in this list, it will be transferred in binary mode, which is unreadable data. Think image, video, and sound files. You can add and remove items to the ASCII list by using the plus and minus buttons below. Important to keep in mind, files transferred in ASCII mode may have their line endings rewritten. This is disastrous for binary files. Only use it on plain text file types. So add extensions to this list only if you're really sure. Okay, into the cloud we go. Here, you can add custom cloud server upload headers. Moving on. Uh, oh, I guess I should explain what Transmit means by custom cloud server upload header, huh? Well, Transmit supports a ton of cloud services. See our video, Servers in Transmit 5, for more details, or see the full list at panic.com transmit. Most cloud services allow you to attach additional metadata to items you store in their cloud. Here, they're upload headers because Transmit attaches the headers to the designated items before they're uploaded to that service. For example, let's say I want all HTML files to have UTF-8 headers. I could add a custom upload header for HTML files by clicking the plus button on the extension side and entering HTML. Then over here, I'd click the plus button with a down caret, choose Content Encoding, and then enter UTF-8. Makes sense, right? I add UTF-8 to my HTML headers anyway, but it's good to front load them. Your cloud service will have more details about custom headers specific to them, but we include some general ones, plus two for Amazon S3 specifically. For example, I can use the .dmg file extension here, and then on this side choose x-amz-storage-class and give it a value of intelligent underscore tiering. Cool. So now, if nobody downloads my app for 30 days, it'll move to lower cost storage. Psh, like that'll happen. My app is amazing. See your cloud services documentation for more specifics on their custom header types. This is the Rules tab, where you can define conditions to apply to folder listings and synchronize operations. Rules are really powerful. That's why we made a whole video just for them. So I suggest you check that out. If you need a quick link to it, there's one in the description below. So now we'll look at the Keys tab. Transmit supports SSH keys for SFTP connections. You can generate, import, and store secure keys right here. And if you use Panic Sync, you can share these keys across devices and with our editor, Coda, too. See our video, Using Keys in Panic Apps. At last, you've waited so patiently and have finally arrived at the Advanced tab. The tab for ultra-difficult, dark magic server stuff. Well, I guess it's mostly for setting up a proxy server and applying obscure FTP settings for special cases. So in all likelihood, you won't even need this tab. In fact, you should actively avoid this tab, unless our support team sends you here, or you're setting up a proxy server, or you're a level 7 super developer or something. So feel free to stop here. But if you're curious and want to look around anyway, let's go. Okay, let's look at setting up a proxy server first. A proxy server is a server that acts as a go-between between, between your server and clients. Here's where you specify the type. As you select your type, you'll get a helpful reminder about what Transmit will do with that proxy type, like send user user at real.hostname. You can use SOX proxies too. Enter all of your proxy server information, just like you would for a regular server. But again, you should only be using these fields if you're setting up a proxy, otherwise leave them blank. And of course, the SFTP proxy password field only applies if you are connecting through an SFTP proxy server that requires password-based authentication. 
If you check this checkbox, Transmit will periodically send a simple command to try to prevent the connection closing. So that's where your proxy settings go. Let's look at what this button does. Whoa. Okay, so again, you're not likely to need this sheet of advanced settings. But FTP is not without quirks, so you may need to apply some of these settings on a per-server basis. With default selected here on the left, you can apply settings to all of your FTP servers. But you can add servers one at a time here and enter their FTP address. You can choose the specific software package your FTP server uses right here. Maybe try setting this if Transmit is misbehaving with your server. Does your server use one space or two spaces to separate columns and file listings? Let Transmit know right here. You can tell Transmit what text encoding your server uses for file listings here. Text composition refers to the normalization format of Unicode text. Linux and Windows-based servers use NFC, while OS X-based servers use NFD. So you'll want to leave this alone unless you're using an OS X or Mac OS-based server. If your server places a limit on simultaneous connections, check this box and enter that number here. Let Transmit know how many seconds it should wait for the server to respond to a connection attempt right here. If your server is busy, how long should Transmit wait between retry attempts? You can use this fun slider to set the time. If it's in the off position, Transmit won't retry. What's this? We're on the Advanced tab, in the Advanced Server Settings sheet, and are now entering a realm of checkboxes for truly advanced server settings. Let's go. If you enable Preserve Modification Dates, Transmit will attempt to reset the modification date of an uploaded file to match the local modification date. Checking the Tickle Server During Long Transfers box will send the PWD command every 60 seconds to keep the control connection alive while waiting for a transfer on the data connection to finish. These next two only apply to FTP connections. Check Use Feet command to find out which commands the server supports. And the Use MLST command checkbox will send the MLST or MLSD command to obtain more accurate date and time information from the server. For connections made via FTP with TLS slash SSL not using passive mode, checking the Use CCC command checkbox will drop control channel encryption after a secure connection is established. This improves compatibility with NAT proxies, but you knew that already. For FTP connections using passive mode, checking the use PRET command checkbox will send the PRET command prior to file transfer operations. This pre-transfer command is required when your passive mode server is talking to standard FTP servers. Check this box to enable TLS version 1.2 encryption for FTP servers. This applies to connections via FTP with TLS slash SSL and FTP with implicit SSL, but note that it may cause connection issues with non-compliant servers. Whew, we made it through all of Transmit's preferences. Be sure to watch our other Transmit videos to become a file transfer expert in no time. For more information, visit panic.com.